So I just, oh, what was that smile? Ew. I just finished reading Disorientation by Helene Shea Chu. Well, I guess I finished it like a week ago, but it's the same thing. And this one wasn't an audiobook. I actually read this. It was an ebook. So I couldn't listen I, I couldn't listen to it while I drew and I try I tried to find ways to like I tried to get like the like the accessibility option where your phone reads what's on your screen and it was taking me a really long time to figure out I don't know why it was taking me that long but I gave up because then I realized that it probably wouldn't even be that enjoyable like I would keep getting distracted by the voice and pro I don't know I just I realized I was like I, should, I just need to commit to the fact that I have other audiobooks that I should listen to and the book was like over 600 pages and I just inhaled it because it was I couldn't put it down but I, I just really want I was like oh this book is so good I want to draw while I read it and I can't so I just tried to read it really fast so I could get back to drawing but um Anyway, so I found this one when I was looking at best books of 2022, a list of that, and I pulled this one up. The cover is really cute, so I was instantly interested. And then um, it was a Malala Book Club pick, so I was like, okay, bet. And then... Um, I read the first paragraph of the summary and it said a Taiwanese American woman's coming of consciousness coming of consciousness ignites eye-opening revelations and chaos on a college camp and that's where I stopped reading because it started to lose me at like coming of age type thing cuz I usually don't love those and the phrase makes me think I might be too old for it but then the word chaos and college brought me back in. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm not too old for this. This isn't about a 14-year-old coming of age. It's like a young it's like a young adult coming of age. And you know, Malala Book Club pick. So I decided to give it a chance. And I don't I don't know, the first sentence it wasn't it grabbed me enough where I was like, okay, I want to know more. And instantly I was like, oh my god, this main character, this person is a disaster. And normally when the main character who I'm supposed to be rooting for is a disaster, I can't stand the story because I don't want to read about disaster people. I want to read about competent people who don't stress me out. Like, disaster people stress me out. Like... I don't want to be stressed, but it was a nice juxtaposition of character traits because she was a disaster, but she's also getting her PhD, so she's not that much of a disaster. She's only kind of a disaster, so it, I don't know. I like that contradiction, so I kept reading, loved it. It was so funny. Um... I'm trying not to, like, spoil the plot, but, like, coming of consciousness is totally the right way to say it. And I'm seeing, after reading it, I see why they said that and not coming of age, which is what I had equated it to before I read the book. Um, but it sparked a lot of really interesting discussions between me and my friends. Like, I would get to a, I would get to a point in, like, her real the main character realizing something and I'd be like, ooh, I want to talk about this with someone and I love when books start conversations. Like that's why we read books. That's why we consume media. And then I also took a screenshot of a quote that I really <laughs> liked. Um she's having it's like very far into the book and she's having like a kind of moment where she feels this overwhelming sensation of like pos positivity towards someone and her resulting reaction is so similar to what mine would be like it says she cast a glare around the retreat all the positive in the energy all the positive energy in the room was to blame like she's just like ugh, I'm really happy right now <laughs> I like laughed out loud when I read that maybe it's 
I just thought it was hilarious. Like, I just love her reactions to the world around her and her, like, contempt that gets mixed in with, like, adoration and ad admiration for things. I just... Oh, I, I felt very seen in that moment. Um... I don't know, the book was just really funny. It was way funnier than I expected it to be. And I started to really, really like and and some scenes even relate to the narrator. And it was... It gave me a lot of perspective. And it didn't feel preachy at any point. It takes on so many different experiences of one issue. And the different approaches to resolving tension with that issue, like um, the issue in place being sort of like being an Asian American. And I like getting perspective on that because while I'm obviously a minority, I, our experiences are so different. So it was like nice learning about something, but it not being like, Because you're not always wanting to be in that mindset. Like, it didn't feel classroomy. It felt very relatable. I don't know. I really liked it. I'd recommend it to anyone. I would even say it should be, like, a must-read because it's so... There's so many different personalities and there's so many different perspectives. I know I said that already, but I just... I think sometimes people avoid books like this because they are afraid that confronting the issues that another person has will make them uncomfortable and put them on the defense and they maybe don't want to acknowledge that someone has an issue they can't understand and I can just say that like you should confront the reason that you don't want to feel that way but also this book won't make you feel that way so you shouldn't be afraid to read it and it will make you laugh and she eats a lot of junk food. I think I read the summary again later, and it does say, like, the full summary after I read the book. I went back and read the full summary. And it says that she has, like, a junk food addiction. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I thought it was funny that they felt the need to include that in the summary. But looking back, it is kind of, like, a big part of the story in a way. So, I don't know. I just thought that was a funny detail. But this video is pretty short, I guess. I mean, it's like eight minutes. There's just like not a whole lot that I can really say without spoiling the book, but I really think everyone should read it. Like, you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I was so sad that there wasn't an audiobook. Like, I, when I tell you there were so many times I was working on this drawing, and I was like, I just want to be able to read this book and draw at the same time. But I couldn't do it. So I ended up powering through an audio book that I had borrowed on a whim about, um, like, the Renaissance or something. And that one wasn't as interesting as I had hoped it would be. But I, I was like, I've started this book. I have to finish it. But this is not about that. This is about disorientation. I also learned so much about the PhD process. Like, oh my god, like, obviously it's hard, but also, like, I, it made me want to write a dissertation. Like, it made me want to experience defending a thesis. Like, it sounds like you're just arguing. I would love that. It makes me want to just sit down and see, can I write a 250-page paper? Can I, could I do that? What would I write it on? And now I'm just like brainstorming about like random things that I would write a dissertation on. Like last night I was like, should I write, what if I wrote a dissertation on like corporate language and why things like high level don't mean what I think they should mean? Is it classism? I don't know. I bet I could make, well, could I? I don't know. I don't want to undermine how difficult those are to do, but I think it'd be kind of fun to try. So, another fun thing about that book made me want to write a paper. How often does that happen? 
So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. I definitely think you should read it. It's funny. And makes you think. That's it.